Role-playing. No, not the kind of role-playing person, and not role-playing games. The kind of role-playing that happens online, where two or multiple people make up characters and make them interact with each other in chat rooms, private messages, notes, forums, conversations, even emails and so on. There are also entire websites dedicated to such an activity, but generally, any website with any of the features I just mentioned can be used to role-play, or RP, as it's commonly shown to online. Sounds rather simple, doesn't it? Well, there are still some important things you should know about if you want to get started. And because we've been into the whole RP thing for a very long time, even before we made a YouTube channel. Or because we freaking love it. For us, it's one of the most fun things one can do online with different people all over the place. But one should learn how to do it properly to enjoy it to the fullest and know how awesome it can truly be! So, for this video, we're going to talk about the most important part of online RP you should know about whenever you feel like role-playing, such as the basics, how you can make the most of it, and what to expect from your experience. Let's start! So, the first and most essential step of all is to make up a character you want to use. Don't forget that you'll be typing down what you want them to say and the description of what they are doing, as the term role-playing. You'll first want to come up with a decent name for your character and all the essential descriptions, specifications and other information about your character on a profile for other role-players to see. You should also make a list of things that you'd like your character to get involved in, and things that are quite to your taste. So, you can have a list of favourites and what you love the most, another list for general things you enjoy, another for things you might enjoy or not, depending on the conditions, and the last one for what you don't want to do. What we suggest is listing as many things in each list as possible, so that anyone can know in advance whether or not they'll be able to compatibly play with your character with their own, and so that you can worry less about being disappointed. Having said that, you too should remember to read other people's character's profiles before deciding to do what you thought of doing with them, or even contacting them at all, and if their lists of likes and preferences are rather limited or at least almost empty, especially if they've got a note encouraging you to ask about their preferences, in the case you've got something in mind, and you want to know whether they'll be up for it for now, go ahead and ask them. However, even if they write all that for everyone to see, they might have certain things they haven't written on their profile, such as the fact they can be quite picky with the characters they want to play with, which is another reason why we suggest asking them about doing what you want to do with them in terms of RP, or even if they're interested in anything basic about your character. Also, here's the common thing that role players do on a lot of websites where RP is common, so why not think you can do it too? Having a main character, like, the character they most often use in their RPs. Often, this is the persona, or if they're part of the photo fandom, persona. The character that represents the person role-playing as them the most, especially when they do it, and if it's their only character, and it isn't just for RP that they use that character. However, do be aware that not everyone with a character as a persona even role-plays. So there, you can make any character, especially if it's your only one, as I said, and make them your persona or fursona, I'm pretty much the icon of your accounts, just like how I'm the most common character of all of our accounts, even if they represent both. Oh, and if you decide to come up with other characters, they will be your alts. They can differ from your main character as much or as little as you want, but you should still add likes and preferences that are most important to you, especially if they're out of character. <laughs> And now, let's move on to when you get to interact with other role players. As I said in the previous video, think about what you're going to say and do before you say or do it if you decide to approach other users who role play or if they approach you, that is, if they allow you, depending if they haven't listed your kind of character or the way you approach them in the list of what they're not interested in. And be as clear as possible when explaining what you want to do and why, because even if it may appear to be out of the ordinary, as it often is with RP, People on RP platforms can get quite bored or even annoyed if you're beating around the bush. Now, if they say they're not interested in any of your RP ideas, or not even interested in you or your character, just accept that decline, show that you agree not to put your ideas into action with that user, and that you accept the decline, and look for other partners to share your ideas with. Planning is also a major part of RP. Not all role players plan often or plan RPs at all, 
But if you are someone who likes playing them out, and the same goes for your partner, make sure you explain it carefully and clearly. Your partner is okay with what you want to do, and you're therefore compatible to roleplay with each other. Now, kind of like what I said earlier, even though you and your partner might share several likes on each other's profile, your partner might not have something you're interested in for the same reason as you do. That is why I suggest clearly describing what exactly you want your character to do with someone else's before you start. Unfortunately, RPs do not always go the way they're planned. Sometimes, you can realise that you and your partner end up at an inevitable time, like not long before bed, or when one or the other must go somewhere, interrupting and cutting the RP. Sometimes, people discuss what could be improved while the RP is still happening, which unfortunately means that it won't always go the way just as you planned, or as the other player planned, or maybe you or the other player just end up not wishing to continue the RP at all. For example, just out of discomfort and the like. About how well people write their posts during RPs, it varies a lot. For example, they might write short posts like no more than a short and easy paragraph, or as little as just one action like this. Or they might write a rather long piece of text that's literal and has a lot of detail. Sometimes posts are made up of more than one paragraph. There's also the concept of writing in first person, where one makes posts describing one's character or the pronouns I, me, my, etc. Second person, where one makes posts featuring the pronouns you, your, etc. Or third person, when one character, more than one character, or all of them are described with the pronouns he, him, she, her, etc. I usually write in first person, because to me, it looks like what's my character's thoughts in written form, and all the actions are done from said character's point of view. Unfortunately, however, when one sees a post typed out like this, it feels awkward that the very first subject noun, the name of the character, and first verb used are written in third person, and then everything else related to the character is written with first person pronouns, which is why not many roleplayers choose to write like that. Second person is sometimes how I write my post too. When one writes in second person, they use the pronoun you, and its derivatives to usually refer to the other person's character, especially in a one-on-one -on -one RP. However, it can be another awkward way of writing because it can be unclear who exactly is being referred to in the second person, mainly during public RPs, unless the pronoun you can be used instead of one, like there's a massive bonfire outside which you can feel burning even miles away as a way of writing there's a massive bonfire outside which one can feel burning even miles away. Writing in second person isn't as unused as first person, because second person obviously never refers to anything to do with the person writing the post, but it can be abused by being used to describe someone else's character's own actions when only your character's actions are controlled by you. Finally, writing in third person. This is the most popular and most often recommended way of writing posts during RP. Third person makes it very clear that all the actions are being done by your character because you're not your character, which is something we'll move on to later, and an RP script like this looks a lot less awkward than a first person or even second person because anyone reading something like this would think and say that it's much smoother than reading this crazy post full of pronoun confusion because, you know, grammar. It's up to you to decide how you want your post to be or if you even care, but you should make sure the other players are okay with your style of role playing and everything's clearly written out and that the other players are okay with the content that you plan your RP to have and how exactly to plan it out. Now, um, let's talk about what you should do when you roleplay. To the complete beginner of basic online roleplay, it may be easy to think that such an activity should have no requirement to carefully think about what you should and should not do, right? Well, actually, there are such requirements, like what's important to do and what you should avoid doing as a roleplayer. Let's talk about things that are important to avoid as an RPer. One of the most unpopular traits is god modding, when someone basically makes literally everything go the way they want in an RP, and cleaning the way another person's character affects the other by dictating that their assumptions of what they think, say and do are true. Simply put, don't act or speak for their character unless you've got special permission to do so. Instead, give them enough time to think and react by breaking up important actions that have happened and typing what's already actually happened between each character rather than what only you want to happen. 
It's also important to avoid getting overly attached to someone because you're so fond of their character, and you shouldn't be clinging with them either. Like, don't constantly brag for someone's attention, especially in public. Don't get pushy with them, and don't message them the second they arrive every single time. Which is called sniping, by the way. Because clinging is, is very annoying, and can get increasingly uncomfortable for the person being affected by it, which is something I talked about in an earlier video too. Another important thing is to make sure to make a clear distinction between talk that's in character, commonly shown to IC, or out of character, OOC, so that people can know whether you're role playing elaborately or just for silly pleasure, which is what many people on RP sources love doing and chat rooms in general, and it's sometimes a kind of shit posting, or you're discussing something involving what's going on in the real world. Oh, and remember that your character is not you, so don't make your character too much like you even if you share some similar traits, and that you shouldn't mix IC talk and OOC talk, because that can make anyone observing said talk confused, and sometimes even worried and suspicious. Role playing with someone online is not the same as flirting with someone online. It's a way of having fun watching your characters playing with other people's characters online. <laughs> Why don't we talk a bit more about RP etiquette, the kind of characters you could come up with, and suitable types to start role-playing. When you see or find someone's character that you might be interested in playing with, it's a good idea to think before saying or doing anything, just to make sure they'd be as comfortable with what you say to them or do to them as much as someone else would do the same to you. Also, like I said earlier, don't get too attached to someone because of their character or get too pushy with them, in character or out of character, and instead, Give them enough space to let them do what they want to do or must, so that they feel as comfortable as they wish online. Here are a few thoughts you should consider when it comes to online RP. Would I be comfortable with a huge amount of attention at a time? Would I be alright with people asking for attention every time I appear? Would I feel comfortable if someone asked me the same kind of question about what they want to do to me like I might ask this user right now? Would I like it if I'm not feeling up for something but there's this one user who keeps asking me for it? If your answer to any of those questions is no, then basically, don't do it to anyone else, no matter how well you get along with them, or how long you've known each other. As for the kind of characters you could make, you can make any kind you like, but there are a few suggestions for making your character appear interesting to others, like how you can make your character stand out. Try making them original. Let's say if I were to make a character like this, Shabby, a little two-legged creature who looks like Kirby, but white instead of pink with a shy guy-like face, a little golden feet, and unlike Kirby, he wears clothes much more often like when he feels like it. Also, if you want to make your character original, don't make them look too generic a character or give them a name that looks too generic. It depends on the kind of RP environment you're in. So for example, if you want to use a Pokemon based character in a room mainly for Pokemon related RP, you could create an Eevee character who is male, talks just like Detective Pikachu, chooses to walk on two legs, looks a bit like Benedict Cumberbatch, Wears this kind of hat and wears this kind of outfit, and you can call him Evelog, Shervy, or even Shirleyon. Now let's talk about what can make your character so unique and special. Like, let's think about that ideal Eevee character I made up as an example. Even in a very big room full of different Pokemon OCs, it wouldn't be surprising if that Eevee was the only one of his kind that's non anthropomorphic, walks around on two feet all the time, usually wears plenty of clothes, is a detective and is a cross between Detective Pikachu and Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock Holmes. Would that be a normal thing to see in a typical Pokemon RP room? No! It would be totally unique! Especially with a name like Shervy! Or how about this? What if you go on the website like... I don't know, RP Forever? You come up with a short little guy like this, and he's surrounded by characters who are way taller than him. He looks like a little demon, he's quite toony in comparison with the more realistic looking characters, and he... Uh, oh yeah, taken. Oh, what about a short little guy, who's shorter than everyone else, tuner than everyone else, he's a shy guy, and his name is Jacques... Wait, that sounds a bit like me. Fucking hell! Fine. How about a little rodent who sits by, watches everyone else from his little home, while he looks at stuff online on his tiny little laptop like the Daily Fail, and a website full of R called i321, and occasionally gets to have fun with the giant people he sees, just because he isn't the stuff most people are? Or, another background character. This time, a little pigeon, who watches people in places like bars and at parties, where everyone goes to meet and flirt about, while he makes comments about the stuff they do, and tries to talk to some of them, 
while well, coming up with all kinds of jokes to, like, try and join that group of people. I've almost never heard of any character like that or any RP source. Well, if they're accepted as being perfectly part of the RP group. Finally, let's talk about the best times of starting an RP. It's a good idea to think about what times of the day will be most suitable, for reasons such as many RP partners can and will be from very different time zones, make it important to think about when they could be most free or not too, and that you get to know when particular partners are at their freest, depending on how free they'll be at a particular time, on a particular day of the week, or sometimes even time of the year. Also, I insist that you don't look for RP partners and try to start an RP, especially if you want it to be quite detailed, when you're going to leave in no more than one and a half hours, like for someone like work, somewhere you plan to meet friends or family, or when you're too tired or ill, when you're doing something pretty important even if you're at home, or if it's too close to bedtime. What I suggest is knowing how to spend your day, which pretty much everyone does their best to do, but is especially important for frequent role players, to think about what times you'll be most free for even a very short and simple RP, or even you'll be free at all. Offline real life always comes first. So we've covered up pretty much the most basic aspects of general online role playing that pretty much every beginner should know about, and pretty much every role player knows about already. And if you've got any more ideas, tips, suggestions about role playing as well, why not add them in the comment section so that other people can read them, learn, and copy and paste them somewhere they'll remember to find it as a reminder? I mean, that's something I've done a few times before, to remember what to do and how to behave in RP based environments, and I really believe it's something that can help for future RPs. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our presentation all about the world of online RP, and that you've learned at least a few things. Oh yeah, why don't you use this video, or at least parts of this video, as a reference guide to decent RP. We believe that could help too, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But for now, that's gonna be the end of this video.